Princess Peach Showtime is the most recent Nintendo game to release on the Nintendo Switch. And after personally playing the game for over 13 hours, I have decided to share my thoughts on it. And instead of dragging this intro out a bunch, let's just hop straight into things. Starting off with the pros. With the very first thing I noticed about this game being the art. The art in this game looks awesome. It has a really good charm to it and makes the whole world feel colorful and vibrant. The way that they were able to create a realistic looking set of characters while also perfectly nailing the feel of a play is honestly really impressive to me. Each individual play actually feels like it was built to be a play, and I really like that. And along with that, the music in this game is solid. It has 53 different tracks, and all of them feel special in their own way. I found myself constantly singing along to the music in the background, and it honestly reminded me of playing a Mario game. But I mean, what should I have expected? It is a Nintendo game, after all. I've never really been disappointed by the music that they put out. But look, and sound are only part of the picture. What about the story? Well, surprisingly, this game has a pretty deep story. The story that this game offers adds a little bit of depth and definitely keeps you more invested. It makes all the plays feel like it's not just a bunch of random things, but actually a part of a plot. And some of the plays do get really intense. I love all the different stories that are told, and my favorite one probably has to be the detective one. While that mode itself wasn't anything too challenging, it felt fun being a detective in a peach game. Game. And I think that perfectly ties us into the gameplay. This game has some good gameplay. Every single play feels like you're actually an actor in that play, and everything builds off of that. There's all sorts of different gameplay styles offered by the different costumes that Peach has, and the game feels really chill while also not being so easy that it feels worthless to play. Don't get me wrong, this game is not hard, but I definitely don't think the lack of difficulty takes away from the experience. Some games just work well being easy, and I think this is one of them. If Nintendo tried to make it super difficult, I don't think kids would play it, and that's honestly the target audience of this game. And I think that's part of the reason why things are constantly getting mixed up. Kids aren't known for having the greatest attention spans, and if you had to play as the exact same Peach for the entire game, I do think it would get boring. Just how it would get boring if there weren't lots of things to do and explore. And I'll be honest with you, Nintendo really delivered when it comes to exploration in this game. While every single play is pretty boring, boxed off and concealed, there are tons of secrets hidden around the world and lots of collectibles to find. And while I definitely do have issues with certain collectibles that I will talk about later, I'm still glad that there's lots of different things to collect and explore. The last thing I'd like to say about the gameplay in this game is each level is quite long. In my personal experience, each level takes about 10 minutes, which is honestly a good thing considering there's only 30 main levels. And now let's hop into the controls, which honestly are super simple. Princess Peach Showtime only uses three buttons, and that is it. And while that might sound very basic, it actually works quite well. Instead of needing to memorize a bunch of different combos to do certain things in the game, Nintendo just mixes it up with different costumes using the same buttons, which is really genius. And now let's talk about the unlockables in this game. There are all sorts of different things that you can unlock, and it honestly is really fun. You can get tons of different outfits for Stella and Peach. There are items available to spice up the lobby. The currency you're collecting actually feels worthwhile, and you get rewards for completing each new level in the game. Constantly getting new collectibles definitely keeps you engaged with the game, and I'm really happy that they're there. Nintendo didn't have to give us so much variety, but they did. And now let's discuss the bosses, which are honestly some of the stars of the show. Each boss and mini boss feels very unique to the world that it's in, and I really enjoyed fighting all of them. No one felt super similar to the other, and I'm really happy about that. Certain fights were more about timing, others were about avoiding, and some were about just mashing the button as fast as you could. It definitely kept things feeling fresh at the end of each area. And while I won't show you exactly what the last boss is in this video, I will tell you that it is such a good boss fight. Definitely a great showing for this game. But like with all games, there are some cons. Like for starters, the stupid special coins. While I do enjoy trying to collect all of them, they're really easy to miss. Backtracking isn't really possible in many parts of this game. There are all sorts of splitting paths that if you take one of them, you can't go back. Replaying levels takes forever, and there's no easy way to quickly restart sections. Which is very unfortunate considering there's lots 
of areas where there's two paths you want to take, but you can't take both of them. The minute you go down the right path to progress the level, you miss your side path and have to redo the whole level just to get the one coin you should have gone for. I really wish the layouts of the levels were just a little nicer. And speaking of levels, there's really not that many levels. While 30 levels at 10 minutes a piece isn't horrible, I do wish that there were more levels per floor or just more floors in total. I definitely think there's lots of room for expansion with this game. And even if they couldn't come up with more ideas with each of the costumes that already exist, they definitely could have added more. 10 costumes is great, but what about 15? That would add even more content to the game. That being said, not all costumes are created equal and some of them I absolutely despised. <coughs> Skater Peach. You know what else is bad in this game? The text. Like what on earth was Nintendo thinking? Some of it feels really polished and well put together, and some of it just feels like it's literally slapped on the screen. Adding some little text boxes above characters' heads would have gone a long way. And now I'll quickly touch on something that I've heard other people complaining about, the lag. And while I definitely did have some lag while playing through this game, it wasn't anything unbearable, and I honestly don't think it's worth complaining about. Everyone's definitely going to have a different experience, but I don't think it's inherently that laggy of a game. We definitely are getting close to needing a Switch 2 though. Speaking of 2s, I've got two more things to complain about. The amount of wasted time that this game has, and the 100% that it offers. All throughout this game, lots of time is wasted due to the lack of skip buttons, lots of cutscenes, needing to redo levels for missing all sorts of little things, and lots of loading time. Starting a new level takes forever, and it honestly drags out the game so much. I guess that Switch 2 really would help out. And the issue with the 100% in this game is just the fact that after you beat the whole game, it just spawns in some ninjas and expects you to re-beat every level and find them all. That's honestly one of the most lame ways you can do a 100%. And this isn't an issue exclusive to Princess Peach Showtime. I think most video games have a really pathetic 100% and it's actually something I'd like to make a video on. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see that. But with all that out of the way, is Princess Peach Showtime worth it? And my honest answer is yes. It's honestly a really chill and relaxing game that offers a bunch of really unique elements. It's great for people of all ages, has a decent amount of content, and feels like a mostly complete package. If you're on the edge about buying it, I definitely would consider it. For 60 bucks, you're getting a really charming game that definitely has a lot going for it. Just don't expect anything too crazy.